Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's tutorial, which is just going to be a short one, we're going to be going over the um, the kind of grid wireframe material um, that I showed on my live stream a couple of weeks ago. I'm just going to go through this really quickly with you guys so you guys can make this for yourselves. So let's begin. Should make ourselves a new little folder here <clears throat> excuse me so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create a material i'm just going to call this wireframe underscore m now the absolute fastest way to get a wireframe material is in the details of the material search for wireframe and turn this on now we can apply this to oops, see daisy we don't want to apply it to the floor give me the cube there we are we can apply this to our cube and we will get a wireframe. Just wait for that to compile. Now this is, the, the wireframe itself is customizable. You can change the color of it. Um, but one of the things that you can't do with this wireframe is get these squares that we've got in this grid one that we can create. <clears throat> As you can see here, um, any mesh that comes into Unreal or, or any engine is triangulated so it's taken a face here and split it down the middle to create triangles also you can see here we've got a much thinner line with the regular wireframe the reason being is because once we're up close to this it's only going to be taking up one pixel on the screen if we get further away it takes a little bit more space because it needs to be you know it needs to be visible but if we get close it's only ever going to take up one pixel at the most so it's it's not really desirable so we're going to create this grid okay so right click new material we're going to call this wireframe uh, 2 m now to create this we're just going to do uh, a quick little bit of math to divide objects into sections so what we'll do first is just change the blend mode to masked because we're going to want some opacity in there. We obviously need to just have the grid. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to search for world position. So we're going to be using, you know, world position data. And then we're going to find object position. So we're going to use where the object currently is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the object position from the world position. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get an F mod. Now hold S and left click for a scalar parameter. Plug this into the B. And we're going to go ahead and call this grid scale. I'm going to default this to 32, like so. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly square this by multiplying it by itself. Hold O and left click for a 1 minus to invert the value that we get. Then we're going to max this out. Use this as A. And the constant B is 0. <clears throat> now what this is doing is it's basically going to draw uh, sections using the, the world position and the object position. It's taking out grid from the object itself. So, you know, it's it's slicing it into pieces. Then what we're doing here is we're just inverting this. So what we get instead of the chunks is that we get the grid. We, we don't get the, the chunks of, of, um, of object. Because this is going to be uh, put out as uh, black and white data. It's it may show in the preview that we, oh, we've got it as UV data. There we go. <clears throat> so you can see here what it's doing. It's all weird and funky. You can see we've got the X, Y, and Z coordinates here. Now what we're going to do is we'll preview it from here instead. Oh, stop previewing that there. Stop previewing here. You can see we're getting this really weird thing here you can see that instead of lines 
we're getting chunks. And then what we're doing by multiplying this is we're just making sure that we're just getting a white output here. Just really blowing it out of it. And we're inverting this so instead of chunks we're getting lines. And then we're just making sure that we can't go beyond a certain number. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we can actually use this now as an opacity mask. What this is going to do, you can see here, is it's only giving us one set of coordinates, which I believe is the x. So to get the remainder, we're going to dot product this plug a one a constant of one into the b the max into the a and then plug this into the opacity and this is going to allow us to grab the other two coordinates and build us a lovely grid you can see that we've got a grid now now what we will do is we'll just all three and left click to get us a three vector we're going to multiply this that's S, uh, M and left click, then S and left click for a scalar. What we're going to do is we're going to call this intensity. Plug this into the emissive color. We're going to change the intensity for now to 10. We'll apply that. <coughs> and there we have it. Now, if we wanted this to just look a little bit tastier, we can turn on two sided, and that will render both sides of this little grid. So you'll be able to see the lines from opposite sides. There we go. You see, this is a really, really tasty material. Now we'll just plug this in. Doink. Now one thing to bear in mind while you're using this material um, is with certain values, if we just quickly turn this into an instance and plug that in instead. With certain values on the grid scale, Oops, we're breaking things. There we go. If at any point we have, see, if we've got lines here that are very close to the top. If ever we get things that are overlapping each other in two locations, we're going to get that. Where it's just going to blow out the entire thing. Now, this is easily avoidable just by using the slider and just not leaving it left on a dodgy point, like so, where more than one coordinate is overlapping but you can see we can change how big our little grid is make it really large squares really small squares but it's much more free than the previous wireframe obviously you're not getting the exact wireframe um, but you're getting something really quite cool I mean if you were to blow the thing out really high you get something a bit more wireframe like but you're only getting the midsections rather than the faces themselves. But there you have it, guys. Uh, a nice cheaty sort of way to make a fake wireframe material in Unreal Engine. Hope you find that useful, and I'll see you next time.